Hello there. Star Wars. Maybe you've heard of it. It's a bit niche and underground, so just in case you're not aware of it, let me give you a quick lore dump. You see, there's these stars, and they're at war. Okay, now we're up to speed. To win a Star War, you need to have the high ground, not the low ground. If you have the low ground, you lose. So this is the start of a new series I'm calling the IF series, whereby I introduce a From Software spin into some of my favourite TV series, movies and games, etc. So as I was sat down watching The Boy, Boyle, I immediately thought that the ultimate From Software battle 1v1 would be Let Me Solo Her against the OG Giant Dad. So let's build that. Thought it would be appropriate to pop my LED lights on for this one. And we'll start with a wooden base that I've cut to size, nice and narrow for this diorama. And I'm just going to mark out where things are going to be for this. So this side will be the amount of lava, and then this side will be the legendary high ground. To start building up the volcanic rocks, I'm going to grab loads of foam offcuts I have lying around from previous projects, and just start piecing them together with some hot glue to create a big rocky, blocky ramp. Once the basic shape is laid out, we can move on. And I'll take my cheapy cheap hot wire cutter here, and I'll begin Obi-Wan slicing into my Darth Maul foam. Now I have my Sith Lord scum foam sliced to shape, you can see how the slope is taking form. But to make it look like rock, we'll use rock. Rock make rock, so I'm gonna rock some rock and just mash the rock into the foam over and over again, punching, smacking, rolling, sliding, all over the foam, so that it just starts to look a bit more volcanic. The good thing about this porous brick that I have is that it actually makes the foam look a bit more like volcanic rock. Then, for some natural variety in the rock, I'll just cut randomly into it to give it a bit more interest. There's a bunch of gaps and lines between these foam pieces, so I'll do away with them with some old wall filler, and I'll just get that into all the little gaps and holes just to kind of make everything a bit smoother. That then needs to dry for a little while, so we'll pop it to one side. Now, for Anakin's platform, I was gonna just make a platform for him to stand on, like you see in the film, but my trusty patron, Divine Chimp, had a wonderful suggestion that why don't I use one of the brave chariots from Elden Ring to be the platform in the lava, which is, quite honestly, a stroke of genius. So we'll get this chariot primed up with some dark grey, as I'm still out on black primer, and I'm gonna pop him into place with some hot glue. Now, I usually leave the resin pores until towards the end, but the whole filler needs a while to dry and set, so I thought I could combine the wait time with the resin cure time, because I don't like waiting. So I got some thin bits of perspex that I broke to size, and I'm just going to pop them around the sides of the base to create a little tub to keep the resin in. And I'm going to hot glue the corners and tape around the sides and underneath, so I can try and minimise the risk of any resin leaks. And it gets everywhere. Now to measure out the resin. We've got here some cheap clear epoxy resin and some hardener, which needs to be split to a 50-50 mix. So I want 100 grams of resin. Shit. So we're gonna have to match that with 101 grams of hardener. Give it a good swirly swirl, and once successfully swirled, I wanna drop in a couple dabs of this red resin dye for lava reasons. And with some more swirls, we have a lovely red resin jam. Then we can just pour our tub of toxic jam into our toxic tub of Jedi scum. Jedi scum. So leave that overnight and we'll come back once cured. All right, now that it has dried, cured and set, we can just whip off these restraints and free the beast. Even with my high-tech tape and glue system in place, there was the tiniest of leaks down the side, which has made it a bit tricky to get my perspex walls off. but a bit of brute force can get them off and I can go over the edges with a blade just to tidy everything up a bit. Oh, that's pretty fun. That's pretty good. You want the rest to make my power. Now, the whole filler has dried as well, so I'm going to give it a quick blast with some medium grit sandpaper just to get the sides more smoothed out. Then I'll get the rock slapped up with the Black Magic Craft Milkshake mix of Mod Podge and black paint. The 
Mod Podge will seal and protect the foam and the black paint will paint it black. And in a very me way, you can actually hear me breaking the chariot as I'm painting. Terrific. So here's the victim of the fatal snapping, but I'm going to deal with him later. Whilst the black Mod Podge dries, I'm just going to pop some of this extra heavy gel gloss onto the red lava resin to give us some liquidy texture so it's not just a flat block. And once this gel dries, it pretty much just goes clear so I can add some lava paint to it later. But before the gel dries, I'm going to grab some little sheets of cork and break off some little clumps, as these pretty much resemble volcanic rocks in lava. So I'll just dot round different shapes and sizes of these little corky rocks into the white gel lava. So while everything is drying together, I'm just going to do a quick little salvage job of the broken chariot. After a few more hours of waiting, the gel gloss has dried and has mostly turned clear. And more importantly, the rider is fixed. But as I pop some behind the scenes updates onto my Patreon of all the progress I was making, our good friend Divine Chimp asked whether I would be removing the rider so that our Anakin can stand on him like the chariot that you find in the hero's grave, which obviously I didn't think about. So that means it's time to start hacking. The attackers can be stopped by removing the head or destroying the brain. And a little bit of latex rubber can fill the little gap left over. And with that done, we can begin painting the rocks. So I'm doing this with a layer of grey using a small dry brush because I don't want a lot of brightness on it. Volcanic rocks are by nature dark, so I'm only going to do small passes of progressively lighter greys onto the black rock. Alright, now we got some hot rock. Now to cover the top layer of lava with some black paint. This proved to be a very long and boring process, so I decided to scrap painting with a brush halfway through and take the sides to protect them and spray black over with my airbrush. Doing it this way instead means I can get good coverage of it all, especially in the gaps between the chariot, relatively efficiently and quickly. From there I'll do a quick metallic dry brush on the chariot before I move on, popping some different layers of copper and gold and irons across it before coating the whole thing with some dark gloss shader. Now we can start lavering. I can't say I had the most success when it comes to fire effects since I first picked up an airbrush last year when I first did Yorm. I botched the Twin Princes, Quaylag was Quay Naff, the Dancer was alright, the Old Iron King was, eh, it was alright, Ariandel and Freed was okay, but this one is bigger and it needs to be better. So for this I'll start with the OSL, the Object Source Lighting. And to do that, I'll spray some thin white ink where the brightest light reflections will be. So the connection between the lava and the rock will be the bright point. So I'll build up some bright white layers onto it and thinner layers will go up the rocks, becoming less and less intense as it goes. So you get that illusion of light reflecting and falling off. And I'll do the exact same thing around the base of the chariot. Over these white layers, I'll coat a few layers of thinned down orange ink repeating the same process as before, making the base the brightest point, and the higher up it goes, the less colour it will get. And you can see here how it's already looking like there is being light reflected onto it, which will really sell the hot lava effect. So I'll repeat that again with some white, but a lot smaller within these connection points, and I'll cover the white with some layers of thinned down yellow ink. And there we are, that's our OSL lava effect, and it's looking pretty hot. Then after looking up lots of pictures of lava, my algorithm does now think I'm a Goron, but I am ready to start painting. Starting with a base of red over everything. The darker the colour means the cooler the lava, so the hottest parts will be the more central and falling off into cooler darker areas in the outer spaces. So I'll start building up some brighter orange tones on top of the red into the spaces where more heat will be generated. And on top of the orange sections, I'll start stippling on some medium yellow tones. Stippling with a crappy old brush will give some nice lava-like texture to it. Then build up even brighter yellows into the medium yellow. And I'll just go back over the corky rocks with some black just to give them a little bit of a clean up. And we'll generate the white hot centres with some white paint and just keep building up a couple of layers of white so it actually looks like white and not just a weak yellow-white combo. Then I can just mix some really bright white yellows around the edges of the white, just to make it all blend a little bit better. And with that, our lava is done. So let's get the lava freed up and rip the tape off to reveal our reddish goodness. 
Wonderful. What an aesthetic looking shop. Oh, we'll just ignore that side of things. Ugh. Now that the lava's done, I'll grab some black wash and I'll just start emphasizing some shadows on the sides where the lava OSL isn't hitting, just to really bring us into the dark side. Then one final step on our base will be to just slap a layer of gloss varnish over it to give us some liquid shine. Now that the base is done, it's time to paint our printed here. <laughs> Now that our base is done, it's time to paint our printed heroes. I have failed you, Anakin. I have failed I you. Have failed you. I should have known the Jedi were plotting to take over. Take over. Anakin, Chancellor Palpatine is evil. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. Well, then you are lost. It's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. Don't try it, don't try it. You are the chosen one! You're a fucking loser. So I think we'll start off with Anakin and we'll get him primed black. One thing about the Skywalker bloodline you'll notice is they all have impeccable abs. Also, you can see here the trademark Anakin helmet and Skywalker loincloth that he famously wears in the prequel films, and his super sharp double blade katana lightsabers that he wields. So I actually pitched this diorama idea to my good friends at Realstone, and they actually reposed our little Anakin here to match the pose in the scene, so big props to them, sub to their Patreon, or else. Over his sweltering rock-hard body, we'll do a base coat of reddish purpley purple, which will be our darkest skin tone on him. I'll probably just need to ruin the aesthetic and pop some extra lights on here so we can actually see what we're doing. Now each layer that we paint on to let me force choke her will be very, very thinned down to a milky-like consistency so we can finally build up skin tones. There's our charred beetroot man. Now for the next layer will be a pinky sunburn tone, which will go over the burnt beetroot tone. Keeping it thin means we can easily blend between each tone we apply. To get a good reference of how light bounces across the body, I use this hunky reference image here. Then we can move up into more Caucasian flesh tones, and I'll pop that within the pinky sunburnt layer. And then subsequently move up into brighter and brighter skin tones, going smaller and smaller within each layer, to build up a natural skin tone all over the body. And doing that, it'll look a bit like this. What an absolute stud. Now to paint the famous Vader helmet. I'll start off with some dark brassy metallic tones, then just fart on a layer of Nolan oil for that dark side-esque glossy contrast. Then once that's dried I'll brighten it up with some brighter copper and iron metallic tones over the top. Now for the infamous Anakin loincloth. I'm basing it brown, which seems a bit gross, but I'll brighten it up with some sandy beige tones, then move up into some brighter bone tones to go over his uh, homeward bone. Now the body is done, we gotta grease him up with some matte varnish to protect the bulging muscles. Everybody grab some grease. Why? Because we're gonna grease up these beefcakes. Uh -huh. No, no, come right, on, right, easy. Right, right, right. Now we can move on to the lightsabers. In the same way we did the skin, I'll base it with some very dark red, nice and thin as per usual, then some brighter red to blend into the dark. Now I know in this scene they both have blue lightsabers, but that doesn't fit the aesthetic I want, so I just fast forwarded a few films and I'm giving him red lightsabers. Then just building up some layers of white and progressively brighter red layers towards the hilt to generate that bright point. And after a few layers of doing that, we have a red lightsaber. Now for some glowy goodness, I'll start popping up some layers of this fluorescent paint. I'll be using it as OSL on the body and as glazes on the sword to start blending the tones together and generate a bit of a brighter glowy tone, starting with the fluorescent red and then moving into some of the orangey tones for that added hot glowy goodness. And after a while of doing that with many, many, many thin layers, we have this glowy boy here. I did the same thing on the left-handed lightsaber too, and I'll just copy the same OSL effect onto his body. So we'll finish off by painting the sheaths with some greys and metallics, and finish it off with some orange OSL for the lava reflection, which I also popped onto his feet and his helmet later down the line, but forgot to film it. So now it's time for Obi-Wan. 
I spent a long time doing Anakin, so I'm going to try and speed it up when it comes to Obi. He should be easier, as he's mainly in metallic chainmail armour, as the Jedi often are. So we'll prime him black, and we'll begin by painting his big baby Jedi bib with a base coat of white. And I'll dry brush the trademark Obi-Wan dad mask and armour with progressively lighter brassy goldy tones, starting with a dark brass and moving all the way up into brighter gold tones. Then I can splash a layer of shader over it all and then I'll let it dry before moving on and brightening up the armour with a layer of glimmery shiny gold to give him that real nice Jedi sparkle. Before we move on to his lightsaber, I'll do a bit of black washing to the bib, bring down some of the tones of the whiteness, and make the lower parts darker. Then do the same to the well-known metal Jedi shield. For his blue lightsaber, I'll follow the same method as Anakin's lightsaber, but just make it blue. So starting with a very dark blue over the blade, then brighten up the base part with a stronger royal blue, then from there into some brighter vibrant blues and baby blues, all the way to white at the hilt where the glow will emanate from. And to sell the effect, we just need to do some OSL on his arm and the side of the body, but I don't have any blue fluorescent paint, so I'll just stick to some thinned down contrast paints instead. And with that, our two main heroes are done. All we gotta do is get them popped into place. I do think this diorama is missing something though. Hello there. Our wise Basilisk of the Rock, that well-known character in the Star Wars universe. Since I've already got him primed with some dark grey, I'll whack on a layer of dark grey contrast paint all over the body. Then pop some mid-brown tones to his big bulging eyes. I'm kind of going with the Dark Souls Basilisk look rather than the Elder Ring Basilisk look, just FYI. I'll brighten up these big bulging peepers with some yellow tones and paint in his big heaving gas sack underneath with some pinky grossness. Back to the eyes for some more yellowing, then some progressively lighter grey tones to the body, just to the points that are facing upwards and outwards. Then some more pink for the gas sack, some more yellow for the gooby eyes. And then I can paint the pupils in with some brown. Now, since he's gonna be chilling on the rocks, he's gonna need some lava OSL too, so I'll spray one side of its body with some white ink like we did before, then spray a layer of orange ink to go on top of that. Now for this next step, we need to cross north of the border to grab some UV resin, slap it over the big bug eyes and cure it with a UV torch to get that big shiny eye gloss. And that means the model is now complete, and we can take a look at the final result. You turned her against me! You have done that yourself! You will not take her from me! Your anger and your lust for power have already done that. I seek through the lies of the Jedi. I do not fear the dark side as you do. Now you have become the very thing you swore to destroy. Don't make me kill you. I will do what I must. You will try. You were the chosen one! Thank you so much for joining me on this first venture into my IF series. Like I said at the start, I'm going to be merging from software with some of my favourite movies and shows and games and start making some unique builds. So if you have any suggestions of diorama mashups that you want to see, head on over to my Patreon where you can become a member and drop me a message of any suggestion. Nothing is too weird, well I mean not nothing, I do have like a mental limit, but most things are not off limits, so feel free to head on over there to show your support for the channel and get your suggestions heard. Saying that, I want to thank all my patrons who continuously support the channel. You guys are what Star Wars Dark Souls dreams are made of. And I'll see you next time for a Synthy Retro from Software Rendition. Ooh, mystery.